is that I had the lighting done and I had my texturing done. Okay. So inside of my scene, it's just basic. You don't have to do anything crazy in it, but I just wanted you to see, you know, all the stuff that you can do for it. Um, you have the minimal stuff like the desk and the chair and the bookcase. Maybe you have some picture frames on the wall. Uh, maybe you have a TV or a couch. Some people did beds in the uh, Tuesday, Thursday class, beds with pillows and stuff. Um, there's a blanket, obviously, on that one. And then you have some basic lighting in the scene, just so that stuff is illuminated, just so you can see uh, what else is inside the scene. Okay. So now what we want to do is the um, we want to animate a camera. So regardless of how if you're done with texturing or not, you can still make the camera and everything will still be editable, okay? So nothing at any point that we're doing now is like locked in. So if you decide that you don't like the camera after, you can change it. If you decide you wanna add more lighting or models or textures, you can change all that stuff. So up here at the top is your camera. So you're gonna click on that and then go to camera to make a new camera. And then you're gonna click the right button, there we go, okay? So if you click a new camera, you'll see that you get this camera that's just kind of like floating out in space. Now, if I click over here, here's the camera. I click on this little black uh, box. It now puts me inside the camera, and I'm then moving the camera around and adjusting what the camera is actually seeing. Okay? So before that, if I click this off again, all I'm doing is kind of like seeing the camera, and obviously I can move it. But I don't know what the actual, like, through the viewport is until I click this. Then I'm actually looking through that. Now, what we want to do is just a nice little simple pass inside the scene. We don't want to do anything uh, crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set some keyframes on this camera. Now, before I do that, I have to set up some options, okay? So, um, you know, Control-R is your, like, render it right where it's at. Shift R will open up the new viewer so you can render it. Let do its thing. There we go. Okay. Um, now there's a a size. Okay, so each one's gonna render differently. So if I were to take this view and I did you know that to it, you can see that as it renders it, it's only gonna render this kind of like small area. And that small area is actually defined by a number, by a setting somewhere. So this rendering, if you look kind of close, it says size 800 by 600. So my image is 800 pixels wide by 600 pixels tall. Okay, and that's just cinema's default render size. So I'm going to close this. And this button up here, there's your render view. This is the control R. This one's the shift R. And then this guy right here is your render settings. So that will actually take you into this setting area of how all your stuff is rendered out. And you'll see that 800 by 600 number is right there. So depending on what medium you're going to, like screen or web or film or whatever, um, you can change your settings here. So you remember on your um, cheat sheet that I gave you, there was a resolution for a movie. So what is the resolution for movies on your cheat sheet? Correct. So we set our pixels to 960 by 540. We don't care about the actual like resolution dots per inch stuff. We're not going to be printing this. So we don't care how many pixels per inch there are. All we care about is how many pixels across and how many pixels up and down. We don't care about the inches because on a screen, inches don't matter. Um, everything else here or up here is fine. We need to come down to a frame range. So we're going to be rendering out all of our frames, okay? So right here next to the um, render button, the one with the gears, we're going to click on that. And then we just set our width to 960 and the height to 540. So for our frame range, we want to set this to all frames, okay? Now, right now we have not set up any animation, so we don't have any... Um, anything going on. We're, now we have 90 frames. If you look at our timeline, it goes up to 90, so that's how many frames we have. So that's how many are going to set inside of here. And as we start adding more frames, it would automatically render that out, which is what we want. 
In some instances, you may want to come in here and only render a small region. You may say, I only want to render um, frame 50 to 80 for some reason, okay? So we'll just leave that at all frames. Uh, over here on the left, let's see, anti-aliasing, we want to go there. Okay, so over here on the left, click on anti-aliasing. And then under our anti-aliasing settings, we're going to set our anti-aliasing to best. Now, while you're actually doing your work stuff, you may not want to have this set to best because the higher this setting goes, the longer your renders are going to take to do. Okay, so you can leave your window open for a second. I'm just going to hit uh, Shift R. Uh, oops. I have to go back to current frame for a second. I'm going to shift R. So what I'm going to do is I'm rendering out that one frame. If I leave that at all frames and I hit shift R, what it's going to try to do is it's actually going to try to render out my entire movie. And right now I don't want to do that. Right now I, I'm not ready to render out my whole movie. I just want to render this one frame while I'm still kind of like tweaking my settings and making sure everything looks good. But what I want to show is that just by changing that one setting from geometry to test, it's going to take our render time a bit longer. So we'll wait for this to get done. There we go. Okay. Scoot this over. There you go. Okay. So if we look at this frame and that frame, you'll see that it obviously looks considerably different. You know, one of these we're a little bit kind of zoomed out a bit. A bit. We're seeing a little bit more of this area and this area. With this one, both those areas are now cropped. We're seeing a little bit more on the sides. Our render time. render and we say go, it's going to take a while for this thing to render out. If we have 90 frames down here, 90 times 30 seconds-ish, that's a while for it to render out, okay? So I just want you to be aware of that. So as you're working and you're tweaking stuff, you have to set your frame range to current, otherwise it'll render the whole thing, and you have to set your anti-aliasing to geometry just so that as you're working, those things aren't dragging you down and making you go slow. When you're ready to actually render it out and make it into a movie, then you'll set this to best. Then you'll set your output to all frames. And then you should be good. Okay. There are some other options inside here that eventually will get uh, For right now, we don't need to worry about them too much. Um, if you are someone who's used 3D before and you want to go a little bit more advanced, you could do things like ambient occlusion, uh, which adds a nice effect to it. And then you could also do things like depth of field. That's kind of like a neat one also, okay? Now, just to give you an idea of what that is going to do. Come on, zoom in, zoom in, there we go. I'm gonna click back on my camera. I'm gonna go to physical. Pull that down. We'll just see what that looks like. Oops. Now here's where Control R is nice because Control R won't render it out to a sequence. So if you hit Shift R, it will render it out to a sequence because I have my settings set the way they are. With Shift R, it doesn't do that, or Control R doesn't do that. All right, I'm gonna turn the depth of field off. It's going like really slow. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my um, focal length and I'm going to set this. So my focal length on my camera is um, kind of like the lens that you have on there. So right now I have a 10 millimeter lens. And if you are familiar at all with cameras, the smaller your lens number, typically the more like fisheye you're going to get. Um, so with this at a 10, you can see how I'm getting this kind of MTV distorted look. Come on, zoom in, zoom in. There you go. Sometimes you have to click on stuff because it just like gets locked. So what this does, it also makes the room feel a lot bigger having a smaller number. Like the room looks enormous. If I go the other way and I go to like 100, 
what's going to happen is the room's going to feel tinier. It's going to feel more congested because all the stuff is kind of like on top of itself. So we can animate our camera any number of ways, basically trying to show off different effects or give the uh, impression um, of different looks to our scene. Okay. So for right now, I like to just maybe set it to like a 15. 15 is a good value to kind of stick with. Okay, it's not too much of the perspective, but still allows us a lot of room in there. So I click the camera, I set my focal length to 15. There's also presets that you could set here. All right, that should be cool. Um, there we go. All right, so what I want to do is I want to animate my camera just kind of moving around the room a little bit. Now, in this case, it kind of worked out pretty good where it's lined up uh, pretty well. But if you look here, there's a definite color difference between the two pieces right there on the left. And these two pieces may be more apparent on the right. Okay? The stuff that's inside those two areas is what's going to render out. Okay? So if I had something like that, this area right here would not render, but then this area would render. Now, in some cases, it's not going to be as drastic. Uh, if I were to scoot my video over like this, you can see how now this area is darker and this area is darker. Only the stuff that's in this lighter area will actually render out. Okay, So it's important because it's very easy to kind of forget about that. And you set up your camera thinking it's going to render everything here, but really it's only going to render that center area. So I'm going to set up a couple keyframes on my camera. Uh, I'm going to go to my coordinates. And I'm going to go to frame zero. And I'm just going to set some keyframes. So this is how you set keyframes is you just click right on these dots. OK. And you can actually just click straight down. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to frame zero and set up where I want my camera to start. OK. So I'm going to say let's start there. I'll start on the ground. Okay, I'm moving my position. I'm moving my rotation. I'm going to go up to 90. There we go. And I'm going to move my camera where I want this to be at the end. Bless you. And then I'll grab this and do it again. And now, as I look at the animation, you'll see that my camera translates from here on the ground to there up on top. Okay, just something subtle. We don't want to go crazy with the cameras. You don't need to go like all over the place. Um, some people, like just as an example, they want to show off all the stuff that they did. So I have to grab that thing. And I'll click that. I'm going to go over here to frame 18, and I want to show off these pictures that I made. I'll zoom in on those. I'll click back on my camera. I'll set another key. I'll go over here to 75. Oh, I want to show off that couch cushion that I love. All right, so this is stuff that I will get turned in. That's like way too much movement for our camera, okay? Subtle and sweet. That's all we need is just something that just kind of sweeps in and gives an overview of the room. Nobody needs to see your detailed stuff. If you need to delete keyframes, um, look on the top side, you can see the little hashes right here, little dots, there, there, and there. All we have to do is just click on it, It'll highlight, and then we can hit delete. Click on the next one, delete. Click on the next one, delete. Okay. So you see, I have two keyframes: one's at zero, and one's at ninety. Cool. So now I'm going to save my scene. I'm going to double check my settings. So my output is 960 by 540. My translucent auto. My anti-aliasing is not the best. And then I'm going to go to my save area and tell it where I want to save. Where is my... Oh, I forgot something. Where was it? Under my save. It was under my save. Um, so under here, we haven't specified that we want a movie yet. Okay. So what it's going to do right now is it's going to render out each uh, one of my images. Um, but it's going to name it weird. 
So I need to change the name to name.number.extension. Okay, the very bottom one. And then I can click on the dots. And then I can tell this where I want it to go. So I'm going to say go to my renders. There it is. And I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to say Sarcona underscore mini room. All right, so that should be good. Output is there. Double check all my stuff. Yes. Yes, yes. Cool. Everything is good. So now I can hit Shift R. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the whole thing and render it out for me. So it goes to frame zero and renders it out. Then it goes to frame one and renders it out. Then it goes to frame two and renders it out. So this process, like I said before, could take some time. Uh, just so that we don't do the math in our head, if we had 34 seconds per frame and we had 90 frames, that's that many seconds. And if we divide that by 16, that's that many minutes. And if you divide that by 16, you'll get the squared hour or under a half an hour or over a half an hour. Okay. All right, I'll take a look. Um, so that's going to go through and render out all the stuff. Uh, frame by frame and then what it should be doing is inside of my folder twenty five ten here renders there's my zero zero image okay once it's done with number one thinking there we go now it's on number one, okay? So then it'll render number two. And what we should have at the end of this is we should have a bunch of different images inside of this folder. So what we should have is 90 images, right? Or 91 images, because we have 90 frames plus zero. I don't know why it starts at zero, but it does. Um, so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna take this into After Effects and actually make our movie. So the After Effects part is actually for the simplest part of the whole assignment, okay? And these steps are basically like every time we do it, it's going to be the same exact thing. Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Okay. So um, just to reset my view so it looks familiar to you, I'll go to Workspace. And say Reset. There we go. So then um, you're just going to double click over here in the project. Go and find your project. So on my P drive, on my 2510, I'm just going to grab one from last semester. It doesn't matter because they're all exactly the same. There's a fun one. Uh, you may get this message. You can just say ignore. And then you're just going to drag this, drag this onto the new comp button. Okay, so this little button right here next to the you just drag it there, and then it'll put it into your scene. So let's hit play, and we'll see what this looks like. <laughs> that was a uh, hair inside of cinema. So just like you can do the cloth stuff, this was like a little hair thing. I'm just like, let me just try it and see what happens. It looks pretty awesome. Um, so then, once you've played it, you know that, yep, that's my camera. It moves. Everything looks awesome. Uh, looks amazing. Then you need to just export it out. So you go to File, you go to Export, Add to Render Queue. Uh, you don't need to click on Best Settings. You need to click on the word Lossless. You'll change your format to QuickTime. Go to your Format Options. Change this to H.264. You'll click on the Name. And then you'll go and put this into the correct spot. So I'm going to go to my 2510 mini room. And then my final is where I'm going to put my stuff. So on your cheat sheet, that's where you'll see the name of it too. Sarcona mini room. And then you hit render. Now this rendering part goes a lot quicker than the uh, cinema rendering part because it's just taking all the information and making it into a quick time. So now you should have... 10 there, final, 
you should have your mini room and it should be a small file size. Like mine is 11 megabytes. If yours is like 50 megabytes or 100 megabytes, you've done something wrong. Most likely in After Effects, you didn't choose QuickTime and H.264. Those are also on the cheat sheet, so you can always reference back to that if you need to. Um, you can then double click this and now you have a QuickTime movie. So now you have something that you can actually show anyone who wants to see it. You could have even upload it to YouTube if you wanted to. So awesome. Um, cool. So then, what are you going to turn in? So I'm going to stop this rendering because I don't need this to actually render out anymore. Close. Yes. So I'm going to save my stuff. I'm going to make sure that all of my stuff here is organized and named. Okay, so everything is organized and named here. Everything down here in my material is also organized and named. It's not really much organization, it's mostly named. Then I can close cinema. And, yep. and then I'm going to turn in oops, this file, this folder. Okay, so you're going to take that folder and you're going to turn it in. But I don't want everything in that folder. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to copy it and paste it to your desktop and then delete some stuff. Okay. I don't need all the rendered images. Okay. You may need those. Maybe you want to do it again or tweak it or whatever. Just delete them. I don't need them. In your scenes folder, if you have more than one scene or you have, let's say, a backup folder, you can delete all of that stuff. I only need the most recent file. Okay. And then if you have any reference stuff, I don't need your reference stuff in this case. So you may have textures. You have your scene folder with only one in there. You have your renders, which is empty. I just didn't need the renders. And then you have your final, which is going to have your movie. That's what I'm going to look at when I grade these. Okay. Uh, for this assignment, it's very easy. I'm basically going to look at the movie, make sure that you have proper enough lighting in the scene. You've done some texturing in it. You've done all the uh, required models plus some extra ones. Um, and then you have a little animation of the camera. That's pretty much it for this assignment. It's pretty simple just to make sure you understand the stuff. Uh, further ones, I typically um, dip further into the scene to make sure everything is cool in the scene. Um, as long as your stuff is organized in those two spots, that's pretty much all we need to do for now. Okay. All right. So that will take us to the rest of the assignment. Yes, sir. Okay. We have to wait until I'm done. All right, so that's going to be that assignment. Any questions on that assignment, turn in stuff or whatever? That's going to be due Monday before you walk in. Monday? Yeah. So by the end of today, if it takes you, you know, a half hour or an hour to render, then kind of plan for that. So plan by 3.30, 3.45, 4 o'clock-ish to be rendering your stuff out, okay? Um, or coming into lab and then rendering it out there. Next week, 